hey, I'm now, I have, I've done the opening four times and now I don't care anymore about this show. This is it, this is Tom Simmons, uh, dumbest guy in the room. Welcome to episode one or seven. We don't know yet. It's, we're gonna fix that in editing. Uh, I don't know what I'm gonna do. I got recently diagnosed ADD by basically everybody around me. Uh, so I'm all over the place, that's, that's the way it goes here. So uh, this looks kind of like a news setup or a whatever. This is my first day in the studio. So what I'm normally gonna do is just scan through like, like notes I've taken and, and writing I've done, which from experience I can tell you is a book like this filled with jokes and ideas, two funny lines. So what you're gonna have to do is sit through me finding those pieces of gold, right? It's like, you know, I was thinking it's like, uh, my wife watches this show and I've started to watch it because of that. Uh, the Curse of Oak Island, do you know that show? Yeah. Right, where they never find like anything. anything. Like they <laughs> dig for a season and they're like, we found this, this antique cross from, you know what I mean? And then they, whatever. So you know what I'm talking about. So that's how this is, but for comedy. And then <laughs> out of coincidence, Last night, I just was uh, hiding some money somewhere on my shelf, and, <laughs> and uh, I have like what do you old... Know? Hold on. What the fuck are you talking about? You hiding money on a shelf? Yeah, yeah, so, yeah, like I have like, I, like, instead of, like, yeah. You know, like, you know that Chris Rock bit, like, put your money in your books, because, you know... <laughs> yeah. Criminals ain't stealing books. <laughs> yes. As a matter of fact, let me go through this stuff. You know, so, um... So you don't, first of all, don't look up where I live because then you know I got some money in the books. But you know what? If you really need my, my $38 or whatever's in there, then go ahead. But anyway, so I come across this book from, I, I used to date them, but I can tell by some that I looked in the beginning. It's like the February of the year before my son was born. So like the time we were trying to get pregnant up until some of the, so the three here. When was he born? 2005, 2000, so this was 2004 probably? 2004-ish. So yes, and a lot of the ideas as I skim through are the same. We're fucking at war, there's, you know, we're all, everybody's rallying behind it. So I'm immediately like, whoa, 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 everybody, the mob's going that way, what's going on here, you know? So I'm, I've, I'm trying to catch myself a little bit on the, on the Ukraine thing from getting wrapped up in the, oh my God, the evil guy, you know what I mean? Because that's what everybody, that's, what we, that's my natural instinct. So I'm trying to not also play the contrarian with that to myself, you know? Um, the guy was a comedian, right? You, you know that, the, the guy was a comedian. So you just, as comedy works and doesn't work, you, I, you write jokes about it, you know? Um, but I did see a nuclear power plant on, like the outside, outskirts of the nuclear power plant on fire. And that freaked me out a little bit. And I'm like, uh, it makes me not care that a guy looked at your ass in the gym. You know what I mean? Like, there's a fucking nuclear plant on fire. Can we talk about that? And then I'm like, and I don't worry about it anymore. I'm t anyway, as I, I'm always worried about the end of the world. And now I'm not. You're not worried, you're not worried anymore? No, because I know what's happening and I got my own fucking problems. Right? <laughs> I just... <laughs> So, um, you're running out of time? Is that what you think? Running out of, I'm running out of time. What are you going to do with the little time you have left, Tom? I don't know. I don't know. My son today, when I was dropping him off at school, said, um, like, ah, I can't wait till next year. And I was a little like, <laughs> so I was like, huh, why? And he's like, well, I'm only going to have to take three classes, and that's pretty sweet. I'm like, well, you're, you're going to be taking classes at the college also. And he was like, yeah, but then I get to go to a different place, and it's a little different, you know? Like, why are you already, you're worrying about next year? Like, and I realized that's what we all do. So I was trying to tell him what she's not going to listen to. He's like, you got to try to be happy in the now because you're worried about what you did before. It's not, in the, it's not real anymore. And then, you know, you're never happy if you're always like going to be happy then, you know. So that's what I'd like to do, but that's easier said than done, as you know. It's hard to. I think it's Somehow whenever you're into something, you just want that thing to be over, right? Like, when you were in high school, I couldn't wait till high school was over. I couldn't wait so much that I got out of it early. You know what I mean? I yes. quit. I was like, fuck this place. <laughs> yes. I wanted it over so quickly I couldn't be there. And so your son, who has to be there, 
he just can't wait till it's over. That's why he's like, next year I only have to take a couple classes. Because fuck this place. Yes, but the, you 70%. don't. But you, how do I get across to him that he, that never stops? Like now you're at college. Like I can't wait to get out of this fucking place. You know what I mean? Then you're then you're you know what I mean? And then you're in a marriage and you're like I can't get, wait to get out of this fucking. Place. <laughs> 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 like, <yeah>. so, <laughs> um, then you're doing a fucking podcast. And you're like, what time is this over? Fuck! I gotta, gotta get. I, don't, I, just, I dread like showing up and you know anywhere I go. Anyway, so yes, yeah, so I'm trying you to. You dread everywhere you go. Not everywhere, but yeah, like when I gotta be somewhere, I get a little like, uh, you know, like even if it's a show, like I, 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 I get that like, as I'm, like you can see, I'm just thinking about it. I'm getting this, uh, you know, I start to get a little like tense about it and try to get, cause I know it's about being focused and nailing the sh nail and doing it right. But it's also about being totally relaxed in yourself. And it's such a, such, such a, a difficult balance to have like the anxiety is this going to be good? The pressure of all this work I put into it, it, and then all of that means nothing. And you didn't put in enough work, you know, all that stuff. And yeah. all of it means nothing because it depends on if the crowd is cool. You know what I mean? Yes. It's yes. A lot, or man. it sometimes helps to have four comics in front of you suck, and then you just know That's how good. to tell a joke, and you're like, hi, everybody. And they're like, this guy put four words together without looking at his notes, which, by the way, I'm going to do in a second. <laughs> and, um, <laughs> this set, I, you know, these books, I love that there's a stack of books here, but I've, the, I'm looking at these are, these are, these are yours. These and, are not yours, yeah. Yeah, yeah, and it's a lot of stuff that I, I maybe would read, so it's a pretty good, you know, and, yeah. but... The Book it's of Mormon. Interesting in how there. much of it I haven't read. Like, what man, wouldn't you read there? I, 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 mankind. I'm instantly drawn to. Like, oh my God, that looks like a book I'd read. And then I'm like, oh no, it's written by a wrestler. Fucking yeah. no, thank you. You know, interesting what I'm life that guy. That I'm not saying awesome. it's not He's interesting. He's a stand-up comedian now. I'm not interested, but I'm gonna read the. I'm gonna read Mankind or, or Sapiens or whatever by the guy's name I can't pronounce that I know's looked into it. You know what I mean? This guy's been beaten about by the head, and he's gonna give me. That's why he named himself Mankind, though. That was his nickname. That was his uh, wrestling name. His name is Mick Foley. Uh, I know who he is. He does, he does comedy now. He's really funny. He is, he, he, he's put in work, man. He still goes to open mics. Jesus. I feel like I'm getting a workout just picking up his book. That's yeah, what he should do. <laughs> like, he should have a workout in the middle. He's an like, interesting dude. Do, do, do some of this, you know what I mean? Some, whatever. Anyway, I don't. Miss Subways, I, David Duchovny, the actor from X Files. Yeah. I don't even really want to watch him act anymore, so I don't know how much I want to read what he You're has so to say. So negative, Tom. <laughs> um, backpackers, that looks like a book I would be like, ah, oh, I'm going to get that and start You're backpacking. You're reading all the books I put off to the side because I knew you wouldn't like. They're off to the side. <laughs> They're literally the fucking books. first ones. You immediately go to the things you okay. don't like the all right. most. No, no, these are great. Lenny Bruce, this is I, the essential Lenny Bruce, which I, I read the other one. I read uh, Ladies and Gentlemen, Lenny Bruce. I actually just... Uh, Lent that to a friend the other day. Yes. They're doing, uh, he's in a show. Well, I mean, they're that uh, Maisel show. Marvelous Miss Maisel. Yeah, he's in that. Yes. They're, they're having a guy play him. Man, I remember the first Spoilers. time I saw Marvelous Miss Maisel, the first season, I just, I just was in love with it. Like, I was like, this is fucking, like, I just, I just really loved what it. What was it? I think it was all that. I think it was like the Lenny Bruceness and the old school and the, and the, and the, the use of, um, of uh, of Newhart's bit that people were stealing, and her and her boyfriend, her husband was stealing and doing, and that she recognized that it was a Newhart joke, and it offended her that his her sensibility that he would even do that, or she would be married to somebody. So that made me love her like immediately. And then I just I don't know. I like it's one of the first. Normally, all my life, when I watch a comedy movie, besides um, Pryor's. Uh, um, uh, Jojo Dancer, My Life is Calling, which was fucking great. That, uh, most movies about stand-up, I'm... You're out. I'm not out. I want them so bad to be good, and they're never good. It's you know? so difficult to translate that. It's, it, it's the same thing with comedy specials. To see a really good comedy special... Earthquakes. Did you see Earthquakes? I haven't watched it yet, but I'm so excited. I, dude, I've been, on Earth, I've been on Team Earthquake for 20 fucking years. Me man, too. Me and too. There, there's so many people that I remember being like, just... These comedy purists who, I don't know. I, I just, I fucking love You're Earthquake. a comedy purist and you don't love Earthquake. Fucking change your hack name because yes, you're not. He, he, like, he is the lesson in here's a setup yep. and then it's like fucking kaboom, ba boom, ba boom, punchline, punchline, punchline. Not, the, he has some of that Wendy Liebman, not a wasted word thing yeah. when he gets on those He's runs. And it's destroyer. just like kabam, ba -ba 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 kabam, bam, bam, bam. And at the end of his jokes, that thing happens. 
It's one of the most beautiful sounds in the world. Well, the, the laughter, blah, 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 and then he'll finally get to the end and kind of stop. He used to do the thing with his drink. He doesn't do that anymore. But it, and that thing is happening in the crowd where they're collectively catching their breath, yeah. like, ah, uh, like, and they're la in different sort of, and it just sort of hangs in the air for like that 30 seconds. It's such a fuck. And he right. does it in his special, which is only like 30 minutes long, at least four times. My like, favorite comedians are the people who incredible. can take the entire room, get everyone who just had a different day on the same fucking page, and he does that. He, he's, a, he's a smart energy guy. You know, yeah. there are comedians who are great performers or great writers or just energy guys, and he is all of those things. He has... You a lot of tool in his right? back. Yeah, yeah. When I used to sit in the back in Uptown in like 96, 97-ish. I don't know, right around then. Maybe 98, 99. Like, but I would sit in the little, in the, in the, there was, it's in a different place now. It used to be in Buckhead behind Houston's up in this thing. And there was a DJ booth. With sta you know, I'd sit in those stairs or up in that DJ booth with it and just fucking watch over and over and over. And, like, you know, I'd do like a con, go find different mm -hmm. spots. But at first, it was just like earthquake and 23 people in the, cl in the club. And then it like started to build, and then it became like, that was like the peak of sort of the start of, of uh, black comedy, you know? So it was like, that was when Steve Harvey and those guys were coming through, and Cedric, and Burnt, like all right before all that really blew up. Mm. It was fun. But I'd, really watch, I'd watch Earthquake from those steps, like all the time. Like, just come in the, that day after his, cra he's the one who sort of, to me, he's, he is the perfect, like, topical joke like he'll do that joke from that day and then do the joke from yesterday and then the joke from the story from four days ago and then next thing you know it's six months ago and he's still doing top it's like but if you walk out and do the one from six months ago it's right. not topical it doesn't connect but now he's walked you there like back to the story so he, watching him do topical and they're just the way it was he's just just it, and yeah it was he's great Hell yeah so I, I, yeah, I'm a, I'm a huge fan. And I've, I've, I've wondered for years, why, you know, how does a guy that, he's like one of those guys, like how's a guy that good? And it's like, not everybody know, like. Yeah, man. I, and I it's cool to, to see that they're, they're starting to. Yeah, dude, I'm gonna watch his special. That usually when a special comes up, I gotta prioritize it in wherever my life is. And uh, he, that special for me to watch is I'll, I'll watch that in the next four or five days. Like, I have to. I'm a big earthquake guy. He would host open mics, right? And he'd, you know, he'd do, I kind of do that still to this day when I'm doing an open mic with the, well, I'll have my list on the paper or whatever and sort of like, you know, and he would do that with the, the open mic list and they'd yeah. boo everybody, you know, and he'd just go up on stage and he'd just, he'd sort of, to me it was like he would teach comedy to the comics and also host an open mic yeah. and also be funny. Yeah. I don't even know if he really meant to do that. He just sort of did, like naturally. I mean, you know, he's just uh, he's a guy who likes laughs and, and yeah. knows how to get them. And he would watch guys make mistakes or whatever, and he'd walk up and he'd be like, guys, you gotta, you know, like he, would, he was the one who was like the first one to be to me, like, especially he, at that club. He was yeah. like, Tom, you gotta, you gotta open with your closer. You know, you don't got time to fuck around. You got, they open with your closer. That's a terrible impre impression. But. <laughs> You want to try it again? You want to yeah, open with your closer. Like he would just, uh, just the way he would say, you know, but anyway. One more time. No, 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 no. One more time. <laughs> no, no. Um, so you got to open with your closer. And, it's, and it's, you don't have time. And so, and, and it's, especially at the time as a white comic, I had to fucking, you know. But then, so he would say things like that in the thing to comics. He'd be like, like, you got to write the joke. You got to have an idea. You got to talk about something real. You can't do do stuff that the guy before you just did and pretend like the crowd didn't see. So he'd sort of call you out or whatever. And they'd also hit music and the crowd would boo. It was kind of a fun and awful night at the same time, you know? And, uh, but yeah, anyway, I just watching him host. And he, I remember this one time this guy Dallas just was just teetering on the boo over and over and over, boo, you know? I've told you this story a million times probably. No, I, I don't think but I've heard this. <laughs> Kept teetering on the boo, get out of it. They start to boo, blah, blah, blah. Finally, the, the, he, the, the, M, the MC just hits the music, blah, blah, blah. Quake's in the office doing whatever he's doing. He comes out, you know, he takes his time walking to the stage. The music is playing. He's just like, Dallas, y'all. <laughs> Woo! Give it up for Dallas. Came all the way from Dallas. 
should have packed a joke, motherfucker. Like just, <laughs> the fu- and everybody just like falling. Out. It's the hardest I've ever seen a crowd laugh and me laugh. Like it was, yeah, it's the best. Anyway. When was the last time you saw him? Or I saw him here t- doing a show uh, here in Greensboro, like the, 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 in COVID sometime, maybe, really? maybe maybe a year and a half ago. So some of the stuff on the special he did, some of the stuff about his oh, kid yeah. and stuff. And he walks around that special shooting people Sh- for about 20 seconds, just pop, 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 making that, getting laughs off of killing people as he's walking around. Just classic quake. Like you can't do that, right? <laughs> <laughs> he he can. Yeah, he can. Uh, the first time I ever uh, had any knowledge of earthquake was off the Howard Stern show. Uh, he would just fucking kill, and then, like killing on that show back then in the '90s was huge. Like that was. Uh, what would make him kill with Howard? Like what made Howard laugh? Dude, earthquake being earthquake. Just, right. He just he's unapologetically him he just knows what he thinks and he doesn't give a fuck man yeah you know and it, just making fun of everything he made he made fun of everything and it's energy right like you know it's eight in the morning and that guy's coming in with fucking late show energy you know yeah yeah he's a killer it's hard to do that too it's hard to connect it's hard to connect even right now like it's hard to walk into a room full of strangers and a room full of people that you you got it. You want it. You have to impress. Like you have to do well. This is, Life this is you know what I mean. And it's all that anxiety we were talking about earlier. All yeah. of that. Like if it doesn't go well, you have to carry that until it does. Because even a joke that kills every time doesn't work if you don't do it right, and you do it, you're uncomfortable or in the wrong scenario or blah blah blah. You know, any of those things can crush it. It's so anyway. So he would just was he a regular on that show? Um, no, I don't think he was a regular, but he would pop on. I remember hearing him every four, five, six months. Right. You know what I mean? He would, he would swing through. And so does he, would he just come on and um, sort of hang out and, and, and rag out, or would he come in and, like, here's my seven chunks that I've sort of worked on? Like, that was almost like a special. Dude, nah, he was always riffing. He was, always, he was just having conversations, man. Yeah. I, if he ever did a bit, I couldn't tell. I had no idea he was working bits, man. He was yes. just... He has a way of making things very conversational, but yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. And you know, he's a guy who if you, when you, you know the comics that you sit in a room with and they just run the room? He, that's that's my, always been my impression, my yeah. thought of him. Yeah, yeah, I agree A comics that. comic who can sit in the room and just kill everybody. Yeah, man, I remember doing some shows early on, early on with him, like before Uptown even. Like we were, there was a guy, local promoter that would do like, You'd do a show at a Taco Max, which was a, like a small taco bar place. And he'd literally put like a piece of wood between a booth, booth, booth bench. And we'd get up on that and tell jokes. Yeah. That quake was, it was so weird. Like, listen, go to these small southern towns and really see like people like, you're pretty funny for, you know what I mean? And just say the word to them. And, right. you know, like, I remember being on stage one time and a guy came back into the room like the banquet room of some steakhouse we were working somewhere. And guy comes in with it. He was kidding, right? But he came in with a, one of the other tablecloths over his head like he was in the clan because Quake had said some stuff to him. And then Quake just turned it into this so this whole like, all right, if I get murdered tonight, you know, suspect number one, yeah, suspect yeah. number two, shit, all y'all are so. It's like, and then, and he looks like he's having so much sort of fun about it. And then he comes off stage and he's like, let's get the fuck out of here, you know? Yeah. Like, I've got my money. I did my thing. Let's. I'm not. No more time. And he's one of the ones that. May, he's. He may be the guy that made me quit drinking. Really. Yeah. Re- how, what? One of the last shows I ever. One of the last times what was I ever drank. the last drank. time you drank? Twenty. Twenty years. Twenty five years ago. Twenty five years ago. Yeah. So you were saying one of the last shows what? I forgot about this. I. I had. Uh, I just. I drank some Long Beach iced teas, which is a Long Island iced tea, but with cranberry, so you could drink them easier. And so I drank a couple of those, and then <laughs> I, I don't remember, I was middling for earthquake. Mm. And then, so the next day I woke up in my hotel room bed, and there was, you know, a styrofoam thing with fucking chicken wings all around me, some of them eating something, you know. And then I get in the car with him to drive back to Atlanta, and he's just sitting over there quiet, and he's like, you, don't, you shouldn't drink anymore. 
I was like, you don't know what, you don't remember what happened last night, do you? And I was like, I don't really. I was, I remember going up on stage in the middle and he was like, yeah, you don't need to drink anymore. And he didn't go into detail and fucking, he was just like. No shaming like, or anything. Yeah, yeah, well, it was, you know, I, I, he, he, it was enough for him to say that. So I was like, yeah. And then, and that was probably, it was either the last time or the second to last time. Is that the second to last time that I did. I definitely quit for like my own, on my own for a couple months that way. And I'm, you know, by just being like, all right. I'm just not doing it anymore. And then, uh, yeah. Anyway, good dude. Okay, well, how much time have we got left? Anything? You got like five minutes left. All right. Yeah, you just did your first so, episode. So yeah. I did a, I did a, speaking of earthquakes, I just did a, I did a, I was doing it, I was on a cruise ship working um, for Howlin' America or somebody who has this a crazy story, Howlin' America, by the way, of like they were originally bringing immigrants over on like luxury liners and regular like transportation, you know what I mean? Like to bring people, immigrants over to the United States or people that would, they sort of invented cruising. Anyway, they, I'm on, I went to Carousel, which is home of uh, uh, Ozzy Albies, Andrelton Simmons, some of my favorite players. And, and uh, they don't have any natural disasters in Carousel. They don't get the, they don't get hurricanes, they don't get earthquakes, they don't get tornadoes, nothing. They don't have any, they don't get their own food. <laughs> they have to bring that in. But they don't, so I was like, oh, that'd be the place to go if, you're, if that's what you're worried about. You know what I mean? You, I guess they could, they'd ha, they, should, they would get fires. But if you're an island and on fire and you can't figure out how to fucking put that out, then you know what I'm saying? You have problems. Like, what's wrong with you, Australia? The solution is literally all around. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> it's literally right there. You know what I'm saying? Get whatever, 10,000 obese people on an aircraft carrier and fucking everybody jump in at once. Tide away, fire out, right? There we go which is a joke they told me I couldn't do on the cruise ship when I got off. <laughs> <laughs> Literally. They told, you, they, they told you you couldn't do it on the cruise ship because you did it on the cruise ship? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they, they gave me a list of about three, three to five jokes never to tell again. That was one of them. Really? What were the other ones? Let's burn them now. Fuck it. Yeah. The other one was uh, within another joke. I was like, okay, I'll take that out. But it was within a run I do about a guy telling me that Jesus was pro-gun, and I'm like, we're pro-gun, where'd you read that? Matthew, Mark, Smith, and Wesson? That's like, you know what I mean? Boom, boom, I do a bunch of jokes. Yeah. And then one of the jokes is, um, uh, you're a Christian that's against uh, sane gun laws? Come on, even the resurrection came with a three-day waiting period, you know what I'm saying? You wanna bring guns into church? Guns are spo church is supposed to be a safe place where only critical thinking gets killed. <laughs> so that's the line, the critical <laughs> thinking line. They were like, that's yeah, got to come But out. they didn't like that one. Because they were <laughs> like... Everybody floating and eating uh, all-they-can-eat buffets and thinking about critical thinking. Yeah, yeah, well, none of that. We're we can't vacation, have that happen. Though. We can't have that happen. <laughs> yes, so... But, you know, that's fine. It's, I, I, like, that's the thing. They were like, you can't do that Jesus joke. You offended people. I'm like, which one? The one where I said Jesus is about nonviolence or the one where I said he's about love or the one where I proved that he's real to an atheist? Which one was making him piss? That I talk about him being a carpenter. You know what I mean? Which, by the way, get my CD. It's fucking hilarious. Hilarious. <laughs> Link in the description. Yes. And we're going to go out on this because I, I want to, because you're always telling me about um, how I'm too hard on religion, right? And I found some, got somebody to back me up on it, right? And it you're is. You're going to end on this one? <laughs> yeah. Well, here's the thing. Like some of these other books in here, right, that I, w that I haven't read. The, the Lenny Bruce one I've, we've talked, we started to talk about. Mark Maron, I haven't read. Like, none of these have I read. But I'm not saying, I want the Jack Kerouac just because it says Jack Kerouac and I know whatever. You Which give your dog a bone it? or whatever. Is Jack Kerouac. Said of a, is, that, is he the guy that, that what's it, Jack Kerouac, give your dog a bone? Is that this? <laughs> is that That's <laughs> knickknack patty wax. <laughs> <time>. Okay. <laughs> So you're talking about religion, the Book of Mormon's in there somewhere. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like that. Except talk. I'd like, you know what I mean? That's, that to me is like one of the kooky, like, Tim, the <laughs> Tim Wilson had a great joke about that. Like he said, I can't, my wife's Jewish. I can't get to read the New Testament, not to mention Jesus the Western. <laughs> <laughs> right? Yes, it's kooky. Yes, because it's like Scientology. There's fucking actual written proof by the guys that created your religion that he was making it up. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You, it's proof written about it. You can't, you can't get around that. At least with Christianity, you got to go back and do some fucking research for a couple hundred years or whatever. These are... Like within like your grandpa's lifetime. So it's just, uh, 
So th that's where I get into like these guys, like Eckhart Tolle and those guys, which I'm sure the answer to him about those would be like, there's truth within them all that gets you to that place, right? But I've n I never read Eckhart Tolle because I was like, I already, already read all. <laughs> like that's, right, that's the Bhagavad Gita and, and conversations with God. It's like the same, all the, we all create our own thing or whatever, you know, which. So that's weird, Lewis Black. Fucking, I have. You, does he? Is he a good? Is he doing like a Carlin type book where it's? Which book is it? It's a Lewis Black. Does he write like Carlin? Does he write like where it's just like jokes? I don't and, remember that one. Okay. Which, by the way, when I was telling, I read this book from this book from whatever, 16 years ago, and it's all the same shit. And I was telling you, like, like I was still bitching about Sean Hannity. I was just <laughs> spelling Sean wrong. You know what I mean? <laughs> yes. And to bring this back, I literally had written in here. Um, Who's the guy that got kicked off of Fox News for... Uh, Bill O'Reilly. Bill O'Reilly said on his radio show I was, I, one day when I was driving, that's what made me write it down. He said, George Carlin is a fool and an idiot. And I just, it really didn't pass the test of time, what I'm saying. So he's not. But I am. And that's the end of this episode. So uh, I don't know. Hit like, share. Come back and watch this thing grow into something. See, I already, this is how I, this is how I end shows, like on a downer, like, cause I just, <laughs> I, I hate goodbyes. You know what I mean? I hate. It's not goodbye. It's just see you next see you, time. Yeah. Uh, yes. So that's right. Till I see you again. You could do the Irish goodbye and just walk. I, off. that's what I do in life. <laughs> I've done that all my life. That, and I'll tell people I'm going to be there when I know I'm not going to be there. And I thought, yeah, it's the Irish thing. No, it's just, I'm an asshole. I, I, you gotta, <laughs> you gotta be a person of your word and do what you say you're going to do which, goodbye. All right, that's the episode.